It's now time to change out this alarm system, so let's go ahead and get started. Of course, this is a very new voice evacuation system, so it's kind of a downgrade, but we're going back to horn strobes, so let's go ahead and start removing this demo system. So this right here is the new equipment I'm installing. As you can see, it's pretty much all old legacy equipment, so it's kind of a downgrade, especially because we're going from voice to horn strobes, but once again, it is a demo system. These right here are the Edwards 757 Integrity Series of horn strobes. You can see here on the back. These are not going to synchronize with each other except for these two because um, these older devices are non-syncable, but the ones with the red labels are considered enhanced. So these ones are pretty new, especially this one. I'm not sure when this one's from, but I think it was manufactured really recently. Kind of just tell it has the uh, signs of being a newer device. Here's the modern Edwards logo. I think these are still being manufactured, but the rest of these are kind of old. I mean, these two will sync. The rest of them are not going to sync with each other because they're just standard candela stickers but um i mean that's fine these are going to be coded so i'm going to set them to continuous you can see i've already done that so these two jumpers here are something you prep before you install them so here you remove this if you want it on low volume and duh i don't want these being too loud i hate obnoxiously loud devices and then remove for continuous tone so that will make it so when i hook it up to the panel the panel can give it a coding option um then of course you know i have a smoke detector some pole stations i have two of these metal uh, 270 series pulls and then I have two of these more plastic ones but yeah let's go ahead and get installing let's go ahead and start by removing the cover from these speaker strobes usually you can just pry them off with your hands if needed you can put a screwdriver in these holes but I'm gonna go ahead and start unscrewing these units from the box let's go ahead and remove this unit from the box now and undo all of these wiring connections I want to go ahead and remove these screws from this box and remove it from the wall Forgot to mention that I'm going to disconnect the speaker source from the notification appliance wires. So these are out to the signaling devices. Uh, I'm not going to connect them to the NAC just yet because in the event that I accidentally trip the system, I don't want 24 volts going through my speakers. But also at the same time, if I trip the system, I don't want to send speaker output through my horn strobe. So I'm just going to leave them disconnected until the final stage. Let's go ahead and pull off this box right here. And now we can worry about this pull station. So I've already disconnected the zones. So I'm just going to go ahead and start removing the screws on the side of the pull station that holds it to the box. After that, I'm going to disconnect the Wagos behind this pull station that holds it. And then I have to remove this entire box from the wall because the new box is not going to, or the new pull station is not going to fit on this box. There we go. I've removed the box. So now it's time to install the new appliances. So here I am removing the other notification appliance. In this case, I'm also pulling off the box because I'm going to put a white horn strobe here. Then I'm replacing the pole station, so I'm just taking everything down first. Here I am taking down this speaker strobe uh, and the smoke detector as well because that's changing to EST. Bathroom strobe, all coming down, anything that doesn't match the new theme. So literally everything uh, is coming out, even though technically for a real system upgrade, all of this equipment would probably work. So here, again in the garage, pulling out the pole station. And then finally, with the speaker strobe, we're also taking this down. Go ahead and tighten down the screws for this box. I could just use a standard four square box that's red, but this one's a nicer little box. You can see it's red all around and painted really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one for my integrity horn strobe. Um, so the first thing you have to do is take the bracket from the horn strobe. This is the bracket that comes with the integrity over there. And you just mount it to this box. The nice thing about the integrities is that they mount to a number of different boxes, including the four squares and also these double gain units. So we put in those screws first. So there we go. The box is attached to the mounting now rack. it's time to actually wire up the device so of course we have eight wires here it's just two four conductor cables one going in one going out of course we used to have speakers so this was the audio cable for the speakers and this is for the strobes the strobes is going to the same place and what used to go to the speakers is just going to go to the horns so that way i can code these horns to whatever i want and then of course if we come down the ladder go to the device it's important that when we do our selections here we make sure that we select that it's continuous so i've removed the jumper and kind of just put it like that for continuous and then i've also removed this for low output like i've explained there we go the wiring is complete you can see we have the polarity correct and everything so now it's time to put this thing on the back box of course it can be difficult to fit this on because the wires are kind of rigid but uh, again like i suggest you always want to kind of crease the wires carefully without like, you know, doing any sharp, uh, I don't want to say crease actually, like folding almost. So that way once you put it back onto the box, it'll kind of collapse on itself in like a good way. You don't want to crease the wires because that might damage the conductors inside, but then you put in the screw at the bottom here. 
very careful not to tighten this too much because it's very common for these to snap at the bottom. But there we go. It's our first completed device and it looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and install a new pole station here. So I'm gonna put up this uh, General Signal branded Edwards 278 pole station. So of course it has these four terminals, but there's really only two that are actually connected to something because I think to save uh, money on ordering materials, they just use the same terminal block on both the uh, single pole double throw switches, or actually no, single throw double pole and the single pole switches. If that makes any sense. I might have just confused everybody. So just tighten down these terminals. Polarity doesn't matter for conventional pole stations, despite what you might think, because again, they are really just switches. So just kind of put them to the terminals, tighten them down. And then once you do that, you can fold the wires very neatly. Try not to crease them because you don't want to snap these wires. And then put them into the box. Use your screws and then you can tighten this down with your impact driver again especially with the plastic pole stations i don't like using impact drivers or any electric screwdrivers but for something like this where you have um just metal on metal it's fine like the worst thing that happens is you strip out the screw threads which is also actually pretty bad because then you have to replace the whole box but if you go slowly and carefully you shouldn't have any problems and then just, you know, use some trigger control. Don't like just spam it down to the point where you're bending the metal. Once that goes, then you just close the station and you should be good to go. As per usual, I've time-lapsed the rest of this process. So I'm installing a white horn strobe on the other side of the basement. So of course it has a white back box to complement it, but it looks a lot nicer when it's white. In this case here, I'm installing another Sega pole station. This one's single action, of course here in the fire museum on the ceiling. Again, another integrity horn strobe. Technically, this one's not ceiling mount because it doesn't have the uh, ceiling mount sleeve, but the strobe is the same, so it provides the same candela coverage, and it really doesn't matter anyways because it's a demo system. And of course, there is a smoke detector next to it. That's Edwards. The bathroom here, this right here is actually a 110 candela strobe, so it's really, really bright, but um, this is unenhanced, of course, and it mounts on a single game box. Here in the utility room, I'm installing another integrity horn strobe. This one is actually enhanced, so it should sync with the one other enhanced device in the fire museum, but none of the others should sync with it. And then here in the utility room for the pole station, I'm installing a 270 series pole station. This one was eventually or originally addressable, but I converted it. Same with this pole station in the garage. It was quite difficult to fit this into the box because of how many wires there were. Um, and then one more unenhanced device. This unit here is in pretty bad condition. The new system is installed. As you can see, we have all of our integrity devices installed. So the final thing left to do is test the system. Something interesting is the unenhanced devices actually do sync with each other. It's actually kind of crazy. All of these devices here are technically non-syncable, but they all do sync. The camera will pick up their flash. I mean, that's a little odd. The actual enhanced devices that are supposed to sync, like the one in that room and this one here sync. So basically we have two different um, sync patterns, which is technically code compliant. I'm not sure how they're synchronizing because they're not supposed to be syncing, but that's that. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.